I gave you at the end of the last lecture an introduction of sort of the purpose of specification testing. We've done that already with respect to heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation, and you know what to do with omitted variables. So what we'll do in section 8.1 is we'll, we want to basically test whether our, we want to ask the question, is our model correctly specified? Okay, that's the question we ask, and we will not have a particular problem in mind. Okay, we will no particular problem in mind. So that is different to, for instance, testing for autocorrelation, because then we're exactly doing this. We're testing for autocorrelation. Is there a particular problem for autocorrelation? So we'll have nothing of that in mind here. Just a quick review before we get to the technique, because in, in a way the technique we're going to use is going to be very familiar. It's going to use our old friend, the auxiliary regression, again. So let's consider what would you do if, so here we have our main model, okay, 154. This is our sort of maintained model, y as a function of x. Let's suspect that what do you do if you suspect that a particular other variable, z t, should be included in the model? Well, that's pretty easy. You just add that z t into your regression model. You estimate 155 instead, and you test the null hypothesis that this gamma here, that coefficient, is equal to zero. If it is equal to zero, then, so if that is equal to zero, so that implies that that t does not belong into model 154. So if you do not reject the null hypothesis, then you can leave the set out. So that's easy. We've, we've done that already. You talked about that in semester one. Also, if you have a particular nonlinear relationship in mind, for instance, Remember, 154 is a linear relationship, but if you think, for instance, that xt should enter as a quadratic variable into your regression model, well then, you know, you add that quadratic term, you add xt squared, and again, you're testing the hypothesis that this coefficient relating to the quadratic term is equal to zero, and if you cannot reject that hypothesis, x t squared doesn't belong and you can revert to 154. So this is all pretty straightforward. The question is now what do you do if you have an what we call an unspecific alternative. Okay, that's exactly what I said uh, above already. You don't have any particular problem in mind, so you don't think there may be a particular variable missing or there may be autocorrelation or something. You have an unspecific alternative. What what are we going to do then? So what we want basically is a test that flags up if there is a problem. And then, if it does so, then we'll have to switch our brain on and think what could the problem be. Okay, that's going to be the disadvantage of that test. It will not be able to tell us what the problem is. Okay, but we just want to perform this uh, test. So, this is all we do. This test is called the reset test. Okay, you can see a regression specification error, te error test is called uh, first introduced by Ramsey, and therefore it's also sometimes called the Ramsey's retest, uh, reset test. So, and here are the steps. Okay, again, it's a three-step procedure, as in usually in auxiliary regressions. The first step, the first thing we do, is this. Okay, we just as usual. We estimate our linear model that was in 154. That's our linear model, and we get the correctly, um, um, 
we, we get parameter estimates alpha hat and beta hat. Now it's slightly different to, to our usual auxiliary regression approach. What we need to do next and the next step is we calculate our predicted value for y. Okay, so these are the predicted values. And of course you know how to calculate these alpha hat plus beta hat times xt. Okay, or the expected value expected values for yt. So then now we have a series of yt. And then in step three, our auxiliary regression. Now we use on the left hand side our original variable, but you could use ut hat as well. So you could say you could have here ut hat. These would be perhaps we write that here, you can also get a series of estimated residuals. So, and in that uh, auxiliary regression, you can use ut hat or yt. Okay, and in different textbooks, you'll see different versions. In fact, it doesn't matter; it will deliver exactly the same result. So, that's what goes on the left-hand side: estimated residuals or yt. What goes on the right-hand side? We know whenever we have ut hats here, and therefore the same is valid with yt, we need to include all the explanatory variables that we included original, originally. Okay, so that is from 154. We know that should that coefficient should be equal to zero. Okay, really I should actually call yeah you, you can think of call sorry, sorry. No. So that depends on if you use ut hat that coefficient will zero. If you have yt We'll just have our original alpha and beta. So we have our xt here from the original regression, all the explanatory variables we need. But then we add new terms. And what we add are these guys, which we calculate in step two. And we add them in the squared version and the cubed version. Okay, that's the most usual way to calculate the reset test, estimating the squared and the cubed version of the predicted values. So now our null hypothesis, if our model initially is correctly identified, is correctly specified, then these two terms should be insignificant. And it turns out that if our model is not correctly specified, that one of these terms is likely to be significant. That means our null hypothesis is going to be this guy. Let me just write this out here h naught is going to be gamma 2 equal to gamma 3 is equal to zero, uh, to, to zero and that is equivalent to saying 154 is correctly specified. And the alternative is that gamma 2 and or gamma 3 are unequal to zero that's equivalent to saying model 154 is not correctly specified. Okay, so this is this is how we determine whether our null hypothesis is correct or not. Now, how do we test this null hypothesis? Okay, so if we use yt as the dependent variable, then we use an f test to test this. Okay, you know you need a restricted and unrestricted model 158 for an s test. 158 is the unrestricted model and 154, our original model, is restricted because it doesn't include the y hat terms restricted model. Okay, and of course you've calculated enough f tests now to know how it works. We're testing two restrictions, you need that. If however, if you use ut as the dependent variable, then you can use the n times r squared test, okay, which is 
chi-squared distributed with two degrees of freedom. So you can do either of these, okay, either of the two. Both will test exactly the same, the same thing. The question is then, what happens if, for instance, you decide that your model is misspecified? So if you find out that H0 is rejected, H0 was correctly specified model, what you know is there is a problem. Okay, there is some problem, but you don't know what exactly the problem is. Okay, so then you will have to think about perhaps autocorrelation or heteroscedasticity. That could be reasons for this test rejecting the null hypothesis, but it could also be uh, functional form misspecification. Okay, so the thinking will then have to begin. Functional form misspecification. So in eViews, you go to View, Stability Test, Ramsey Reset Test. Okay, that's what you need to do in eViews to do uh, to do this test. It's one of the uh, pre-computed uh, procedures, so that's uh, convenient. <coughs> 